Um, uh, we don't need this many windows open because uh, that could be slowing down the connection too. Um, That should be saved. That'll be another study we can do next Friday evening, next Sabbath evening. All right. I believe we're live right now. Shalom, everyone. We're live. I'm Brother Doug, as always. Shalom, everyone. Um, we are going to be doing our normal Haftarah Torah readings and uh, our Haftarah readings today. So I'm going to be starting us off. Um, so let me see here. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's see here. So we're, I, I think what I want to do is I want to use the Word software. What I like about the Word versus the eSword, uh, the Word software will actually, uh, allows me to do a parallel between the Targum Unclose and um, the Septuagint. So I can read them side by side. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to click on that. I meant to click on the Word software. Yeah, so the Word software, as far to my knowledge, it has been, uh, is a program that was developed by multiple developers. I think Douglas Hamp was part of the project. He was one of the guys on the project. Um and, and other guys in uh, Christianity and the Hebrew Roots Movement made this program for people to study scripture. So uh, I like how easy it is to increase the font. And uh, as you can see here, the font is huge. <laughs> I have my setting on pretty pretty big here. Viewers uh, and listeners, I can read along. Okay, so click on compare. Now what I do is I click on the arrow is you want to select which modules to use, okay? We're not going to do the ISR. We'll do the LXXE, which is the Breton's English Septuagint. And where are you, Unkelos? O-N-K, there you go. All right, check mark. Now, I think someone's trying to get in here. But was, yeah, there we go. Okay, all right, Leviticus. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to be reading Leviticus chapter 16 for us. Okay. And Yahuwah spoke, uh, uh, called Masha again and spoke to him out of the tabernacle witness saying, speak to the children of Yashar all and you shall say to them, if any of you shall bring gifts to Yahuwah, you shall bring your gifts of the cattle, the oxen and of the sheep. If his gift be a whole burnt offering, he shall bring an unblemished male of the herd to the door of the tabernacle witness. He shall bring it as acceptable before you would. So already we're seeing a change in how they got to bring these sacrifices before they even kill the animal. They got to bring it to the door of the tabernacle. You can't just kill it wherever in the wilderness. Okay. Already we see... Uh, a changing, uh, adding to the Torah here. Who is adding to the Torah here, and he's making it distinctive. And if you want um, the rap, the reasoning for it, you can find in the book of Deuteronomy. It goes more into why it changed, especially Deuteronomy twelve is a perfect <laughs> chapter for that. Okay, so moving on here, he shall lay his hand on the head of the burnt offerings as as a thing acceptable for him to make atonement for him, and they shall slay the calf before Yahuwah. And the sons of Aaron and the priest shall bring the blood, shall pour the blood round about the altar, which at the doors of the tabernacle witness, okay? And having flayed the whole burnt offering, they shall divide it by its limbs, you know, basically, you know. Okay. All right. And the sons of Aaron's priest shall put fire on the altar and shall pile the wood on the altar. And the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall pile up the divided parts in the head and the fat and the wood on the altar, which is on the altar. And the entrails and the feet they shall wash in water. The priest shall put all on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a sacrifice, a sweet-smelling savor to Yahuwah. 
And if his gift of the sheep to Yahuwah or of the lambs or of the kids, you know, baby goats, of whole burnt, for whole burnt offerings, he shall bring it a male without blemish. And he shall lay his hand on his head, and they shall kill it by the side of the altar toward the north. Before Yahuwah and the sons of Aaron, the priest shall pour its blood on the altar round about. Okay. And they shall divide it by its limbs, its head and its fat, and the priest shall pile them up on the wood, which is on the fire on the altar. And they shall wash the entrails in the feet of water. And the priest shall bring all the parts and put them on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a sacrifice, a sweet savor to Yahuwah. And if he bring his gift, a burnt offering to Yahuwah of birds, he shall bring his gift of doves or pigeons. And the priest shall bring it to the altar and rain off its head. And the priest shall put it on the altar and shall rain out the blood at the bottom of the altar. He shall take away the crop with the feathers, shall cast it forth by the altar toward the east to the place of the ashes. And he shall break it off from the wings and shall not separate it. And the priest shall put it on the altar on the wood, which is on the fire. It is a burnt offering, a sacrifice, a sweet smelling savor to Yahuwah. So we're going to move on here. Oh, crud. Why did no one tell me it was Leviticus 11? I mean, Leviticus 1. Somehow, somehow, yeah, that's weird. All right, my bad at that, guys. I didn't even realize that I was on Leviticus chapter 1. All right, that's all right. Um, this is the law of man who has an issue if one discharge of seed of copulation so that he should be polluted by it. And the law for her that has the issue of blood in her separation. So this is talking about a woman's period. Okay. And as to a person who has an issue of seed for a male and the female for the man who shall have lain with her that is set apart. Okay, what is going on here? It keeps doing that. I don't know what. Come on, stupid program. Stop doing that. All right. So let me just make sure it keeps, it keeps moving at the time. Leviticus and Yehoshua spoke to Masha after the two sons of God bring strange fire before Yahuwah. So they died. And Yahuwah said, Masha, speak to Aaron, your brother, and let him not come in at all times in a set apart place within the veil before the uh, propitation, which is upon the ark of testimony, or ark of witness, and he shall not die. For I will appear in a cloud on the propitary mercy seat. Same thing. And actually that the, this concept you'll see in the New Testament um, with, with that Greek word propitation, you'll see mention Yahushua is the propitation for our sins. Okay. Thus shall Aaron enter into the set-apart place with a calf of the herd for a sin offering and a ram for a whole burnt offering. And he shall put on the set-apart linen tunic. He shall have on his flesh the linen drawers and shall gird himself with a linen girdle, shall put on the linen cap. They are set-apart garments. He shall bathe all his body in water and shall put them on. So that's the uh, articles of the garments for the priests. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Yasharal two kids of the goats, for his sin offering, a lamb for the whole burnt offering. Okay. And Aaron shall bring the calf for his own sin offering, shall make atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take two goats and place them before Yahuwah by the door of the tabernacle witness. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one for Yahuwah and one for Azazel. Okay. Unless you've read certain extra biblical literature, you will not understand why it's talking about sending a goat to Azazel. But if you read certain books that, uh, uh, especially a certain individual book that I believe is inspired, the book of Enoch, you'll actually understand this concept in the canon, why they're talking about this, why there's a lot for you and a lot for Azazel. Okay. And Aaron shall bring forth the goat on which the lot for you who have fell and shall offer him for a sin offering. Okay, and the goat upon which the lot of the scapegoat came, he shall present alive before Yahuwah to make atonement upon him so as to send him away as a scapegoat. And he shall send him into the wilderness. 
Aaron shall bring the calf for his sin, and he shall make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall kill the calf for his sin offering, and shall take his censer full of coals of fire of the, off the altar, which is before you, and he shall fill his hands with fine compound incense, shall bring it within the veil, okay, the veil of the tabernacle, right? And he shall put the incense on the fire before you, and the smoke of the incense shall cover the mercy seat over the tables of witness, and he shall not die. Verse 14, and he shall take of the blood of the calf and sprinkle with his finger on the mercy seat eastward. Before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle seven times of the blood with his finger. And okay, so where I was at, I think verse 14. Okay. okay. And he shall kill the goat for the sin offering that is for the people before you, who he shall bring in of its blood within the veil and shall do with its blood as he did with the blood of the calf, shall sprinkle its blood on the mercy seat in front of the mercy seat. Okay. And he shall make atonement for the set apart place on account of the uncleanness of the children of Yashar all and for their trespasses in matter of all their sins. Thus shall he do to the tabernacle witness established among them in the midst of their uncleanness. There shall be no man in the tabernacle witness when he goes in to make atonement in the set apart place until he shall have come out and he shall make atonement for himself, for his house and for all the children of Yashar all. And he shall come forth before Yahuwah. He shall make atonement upon shall take blood of the calf and, shall, and, and the blood of the goat and shall put it on the horns of the altar round about. Okay. And he shall sprinkle some of the blood upon it seven times with his finger and shall purge it and set it apart from the uncleanness of the children of Yashar all, and he shall finish making atonement for the set apart place and for the tabernacle witness for the altar, and he shall make cleansing for the priests, and he shall bring the living goat. Okay. And Aaron shall lay his hands on the head of the living goat, and he shall declare over him all the lawlessnesses of the children of Yashar all, and all their unrighteousnesses. And their sins, and he shall lay them upon the head of the live goat, and shall send him by the hand of a ready man into the wilderness. Okay, and um, I don't want to go too much into it, uh, to you spend too much time on, on this concept, but basically, um, Enoch explains this concept of that ascribe all sin to Azazel. Okay, that's why this is being commanded here. So um, basically, according to the sin of the watchers in the book of Enoch and, and what happened, Azazel also pretty much revealed a lot of things we were not supposed to know. Um, a lot of evil things that people still to do today that they think are normal. Um, a lot of people still do astrology today. They think it's normal. A lot of people, you know, uh, do, do weird witchcraft with metals of the earth and all that um so if you read the book of enoch you'll you'll it will give you a better understanding of this concept of why they're um bringing the scapegoat to zazel and putting all the sins of yashrael on the scapegoat and sending it to zazel in the wilderness in the desert okay so anyway i just wanted to explain that okay um, and the goat shall bear their unrighteousness upon him into the, a desert land, and Aaron shall send away the goat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall enter into the tabernacle of witness, and shall put off the linen, linen garment, which he had put on as he entered into the set-apart place, and shall lay it there. And he shall bathe his body in water in the set-apart place, and shall put on his raiment, and shall... Go out and offer the whole burnt offering for himself and the whole burnt offering for the people and shall make atonement for himself and for his house and for the people as for the priests. And he shall offer the fat for the sin offering on the altar and, and he that sends the goat forth the goat that has been sent apart, that has been set apart 
to be let go, or if you look at the Targum here, it says the goat that will be sent to Azazel shall wash his garments and bathe his body in water and afterwards shall enter into the camp. And the calf for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the set apart place, they shall carry forth out of the camp and burn them with fire, even their skins and their flesh and their dung. And he that burns them shall wash his garments, bathe his body in water, and afterwards he shall enter into the camp. Now we're getting to the part where this is going to start talking about the Day of Atonement. Okay. And this shall be a perpetual statue for you in the seventh month. On the tenth day of the month, you shall humble your souls and shall do no work, the native and the stranger who abides among you. For in this day, you shall make atonement for you to cleanse you. From all your sins before Yahuwah, and you shall be purged. This shall be to you a most set-apart Sabbath. I like how it says a most set-apart Sabbath in, uh, in the Septuagint. A rest, you shall humble your souls. Okay, that means repentance. Just, just you know, to be honest with what the commandment's literally saying, saying to humble yourself. Self-examination, Okay. It is a perpetual ordinance. The priests, whomsoever they shall anoint, shall make atonement, and whomsoever they shall set apart to exercise the priestly office after his father, he shall put on the linen robe, the set-apart garment. He shall make atonement for the most set-apart place and the tabernacle of witness, and he shall make atonement for the altar and for the priest, and he shall make atonement Whoops, why does it do that? I hate that. And make atonement for the altar and shall make it. Okay. And he shall make atonement for the most set apart place in the tabernacle witness. He shall make atonement for the altar and for the priest. And he shall make atonement for all the congregation. Okay. And this shall be to you a perpetual statute to make atonement for the children of Yasharal for all their sins. It shall be done once in the year as you who have commanded Masha. All right, moving on to the next chapter here, chapter 17. And Yahuwah spoke to Masha, speak to Aaron, to his sons, and to all the children of Yasharal, and you shall say to them, this is the word which Yahuwah has commanded, saying, every man of the children of Yasharal, where the strangers abide among you, who shall kill a calf or a sheep or a goat in the camp, or who shall kill it out of the camp, and shall not bring it, to the door of tabernacle witness so as to sacrifice it for a whole burnt offering offering or peace offering to Yahuwah to be acceptable for a sweet smelling savor and whomsoever shall slay it without and shall not bring it to the door of tabernacle witness so as to offer as a gift to Yahuwah before the tabernacle of Yahuwah blood shall be imputed to that man he has shed blood that soul shall be cut off from his people what it's basically saying is don't even insinuate that you think you can you can sacrifice wherever you want. <laughs> to put it in layman's terms here, don't think you can offer me a sacrifice in your backyard. That's not going to happen. Okay, so Yahuwah is basically these are uh, um, these are commandments pertaining to the Levitical priesthood to actual sacrifices, not killing an animal to eat it. This is talking about killing it and where you're supposed to kill the animal that's going to be sacrificed okay so that's self-explanatory there all right that the children of yashua may offer their sacrifices all that they shall slay in the fields bring them to yahuwah unto the doors of tabernacle witness to the priest they shall sacrifice them as a peace offering to yahuwah and the priest shall pour the blood on the altar round about before yahuwah by the doors of the tabernacle witnesses shall offer the fat for sweet smelling savor to Yahuwah. And they shall no longer offer their sacrifices to vain mighty ones. So this is the context here. This is not talking about killing animals to eat. This is not talking about food. This is talking about animals that are designated for sacrifices. Okay. These, these are specific sacrifices in the law that, who is giving these commandments so that Israel is not tempted to sacrifice to other mighty ones in the wilderness. That's the reason he's giving these specific commandments that they have to bring the animal to the, to the tent of witness. 
before sacrificing it. Okay, after which they go a whoring, it shall be a perpetual statute for you, for your generations. You shall say to them, whatever a man of the children of Yasharal or of the sons of the converts abiding among you shall offer a whole burnt offering or a sacrifice and shall not bring into the door of the tabernacle witness to sacrifice it to Yahuwah. That man shall be destroyed from among his people. And whatever man of the children of Yashrael or of the strangers abiding among you shall eat any blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eats blood. I will destroy it from his people. For the life of the flesh is its blood. And I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For its blood shall not shall make atonement for the soul. Therefore, I said to the children of Yasharal, no soul of you shall eat blood, and the stranger that abides among you shall not eat blood. Whatever man of the children of Yasharal or of the strangers abiding among you shall take any animal in hunting, beast, or bird which is eaten, then shall he pour out the blood. Okay. So now this is talking about, like, even you're not even to consume blood when you have... When you're killing an animal to eat it, like you can't soon consume blood at all, whether it's a sacrifice or it's something that you're eating as a meal. Okay. All right. So it says you shall not take an animal in hunting beast or bird, which is eaten. Then he shall pour out the blood and cover it in the dust for the blood of all flesh is its life. And I said to the children of Yashar, you shall not eat the blood of any flesh, for the life of all flesh is its blood. Everyone that eats it shall be destroyed. Every soul which eats that which has died of itself or is taken of beasts, either among the natives or among the strangers, shall wash his garments and bathe himself in water and shall be unclean until evening. Then shall he be clean." But if he does not wash his garments and does not bathe his body in water, then he shall bear his lawlessness. Okay, so now we're about to start chapter 18, Leviticus 18. And Yahuwah spoke to Masha, saying, Speak to the children of Yasharal. You shall say to them, I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, you shall not do according to the devices of Egypt in which you dwelt, according to the devices of the land of Canaan. To which I bring you, you shall not do, you shall not walk in their ordinances. You shall observe my right rulings and shall keep my ordinances and shall walk in them. I am so you shall keep all my ordinances and all my right rulings, and do them, which if a man does, he shall live in them. I am Yahuwah your Elohim. No man shall draw near to any of his near kindred to uncover their nakedness. I am Yahuwah. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father, mother, and you shall not, un um, you shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife, is your father's nakedness, kiss. the nakedness of your sister, by your brother, by your mother, born at home or abroad, nakedness you shall not uncover the nakedness of your son daughter or your daughter's son and by the way just to explain this really quick not about looking at the nakedness of your father or your mother haha your name that's not that's not what you and this is why people don't understand the sin of ham this is like You're all right. Um, as I was 
a hero. As I was saying before, this is why people don't understand the sin of ham. Um, cover your dad's nakedness literally mean we go into his wife, okay? whether it's your mother, whether it's uh, another wife your father has. Okay, that's what it means to see your father's nakedness, scripturally speaking. Okay, um, and that's people don't understand that whole concept of why of, of why the curse of Canaan happened and why why it you know. So anyway, yeah, I know. So see Jesus. Us to begin. Someone doesn't want me on Zoom. Okay. Brother, you got a bad, bad. Uh, I can't hear you, brother. Bad it wasn't connection. On... Bad connection. Bad connection, bro. I. It's fine now. It's fine now. I'm. I don't, I don't know. This is weird. All right, so let me, let me scroll down. Because this young. No, 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 your pink phone. Where's your pink phone? Oh, it's over here. Oh. All right, sorry about that, everyone. My hotspot is really messing up today. Um, yeah, it's really doing bad. So let me try something else. I'm going to try to do an Ethernet here because this, this is crazy. I can't be doing this. Can't be getting kicked off every couple of minutes. This is ridiculous. All right, where where's my USB cord? I'm gonna turn turn this other phone off. I think it's over getting overheated too for some stupid retarded reason. Really? Yeah. All right, all right. Bear with me, viewers and listeners. Bear with me here. Bear with me here. We we last. We just left off at verse 17 of Leviticus 18. Okay. Let me just see here. I'm going to try to do something here. I don't need my, I don't need that keyboard connected anyway. That's a waste anyway. All right. So, all right. It's, it's weird. My hotspot last night was not acting up when I used it. It's just very weird today. It wants to act up. Very strange. Um, okay. Let's see here. It's Shabbat, Miho. You know the enemy don't want any to record. And we're looking at the scripture today. And yeah. we're not. Let's see here. <clears throat> 109. Let me see here. Email. There we go. Come on. Come on, Wi Fi. 
get on already. Connect. There we go. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I recommend people that have bad quality connections do this. It's, oh, man. The Lord this is a, a Ethernet connection. Here. So, let me go to USB tethering. Connect. Set as metered connection. All right. Yes, connect. Okay. There we go. Now we got a. Now we got an Ethernet. Droid cam. Back to the droid. Okay, so it's let me just check my IP address here. Four one. Uh, what the heck? Oh, four one dot two oh five. Smells rotten in here, huh? All right, let me check this in here. This should work. There we go. All right. So that should work. Okay. If I could get this stupid phone to stay still, that would be great. Got one. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. I'm going to have to do. All right. We're back, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for uh, keeping the live. Uh, thank you for staying tuned, everyone. Um, so. Unfortunately, I had some stupid technical difficulties here, so we're back here. All right, so Leviticus 18, verse 17, all right, which says, all right, the nakedness of your brother's wife, it is your brother's nakedness. Do not do that. Nakedness of, okay, this is really getting annoying why they keep doing this every time I try to scroll down. Okay, all right. Okay, and you shall not take a wife in addition to her sister, to her sister, as a rival to uncover her nakedness in opposition to her while she is yet living. Who is adding this commandment? Remember the story of Jacob, okay? So sometimes you who adds commandments to prevent certain situations from happening again, okay? You shall not go into a woman under separation for her uncleanness to uncover her nakedness. And you shall not lie with your neighbor's wife to defile yourself with her. You shall not give of your seed to serve a ruler, or it would say Molech here. Okay, Molech. You shall not profane my separate name. I am Yahuwah. Okay. You shall not lie with a man as with a woman for his abomination. Um, okay. Neither shall you lie with any four-footed beast for copulation to be polluted with it. Neither shall a woman present herself before any four-footed beast or four-footed creature to have a connection with it for his abomination. And, um, to me, it makes sense why this commandment's being given. I used to not understand this until I read the book of Enoch. Uh, now it makes sense why he's given this commandment, because this is something that they did in the pre-flood world and that the Canaanites, the, the Egyptians, all these other nations are still doing <laughs> even after the flood, even after the flood. So, okay. And so Yahuwah is basically warning them, do not do these abominations, do not and notice how this chapter, when we first started it, it started out with what? Do not do the devices of the Egyptians, right? So that probably was one of their devices. Okay. Do not defile yourselves with any of these things, for in all these things the nations are defiled, which I drive out before you. Okay. And the land is polluted. And I have repaid their lawlessness to them because of it. The, and the land is agreed with them that dwell upon it you shall keep all my statutes and all my ordinances and you shall do none of these abominations neither the native nor the stranger that joins themselves with you okay for all these abominations the men of the land did who were before you and the land was defiled so you who's even saying yeah the canaanites were doing this stuff okay 
unless the land be agreed with you and you're polluting it, and it was agreed with the nations before you, for whomsoever shall do any of these abominations, the souls that do them shall be destroyed from among their people. And you shall keep my ordinances that you may not do any of these abominable practices which have taken place before your time. You shall not be polluted in them, for I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Okay, chapter 19. And Yahuwah spoke to Masha saying, speak to the congregation, the children of Yasharal, and you shall say to them, you shall be set apart for I, Yahuwah Yahim, am set apart. Let every one of you reverence his father and his mother. You shall keep my Sabbaths. I, Yahuwah, I am Yahuwah Yahim. You shall not follow idols. And you shall not make to yourselves molten mighty ones. I am Yahuwah Yahim. And if you will sacrifice a peace offering to Yahuwah, and you shall offer it acceptable from yourselves. In what days soever you shall sacrifice it, it shall be eaten. And on the following day, and if any of it should be left till the third day, it shall be thoroughly burnt with fire. And if it should be eaten on the third day, it is unfit for sacrifice. It shall not be accepted. Okay. And he that eats it shall bear his lawlessness because he has profaned the set apart things of Yahuwah. And the soul shall eat it, eat it, shall be destroyed from among their people. And when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not complete the reaping of your field with exactness. You shall not gather that which falls from your reaping. You shall not go over the gathering of your vineyard. Neither shall you gather the remaining grapes of your vineyard. Notice how your is there every time. Your land, your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am Yahu Yahim. So let's keep everything in context with these commandments we're reading here, especially with the farming here. This is referring to the land of Israel. It's not referring to when you're in captivity and you're in someone else's land. Okay. So no, and I mean, so we gotta keep everything in context. I mean, I'm I'm not saying don't give to the poor. I'm just saying what, what these agricultural commandments we just read about are referring to when you're in your land that he has given you. Okay. All right. So let me just, yeah. When you reap the harvest of your land. So just keep everything in context when we're reading this stuff. Okay. You shall not steal, you shall not die, you shall not lie, neither shall one bear false witness as an informer against his neighbor. You shall not swear unrighteously by my name, you shall not profane the set apart name of your Elohim. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Okay. You shall not <clears throat> injure your brother, neither do you rob him, neither shall the wages of the hi uh, hired servant remain with you until morning. And you shall not revile the deaf, neither shall you put a stumbling block in the way of the blind. And you shall fear Yahuwah your Elohim. I am Yahuwah your Elohim. Um, you shall not act unrighteously in right ruling. You shall not accept the person of the poor, nor admire the person of the mighty. With right ruling shall you rightly rule your neighbor. You shall not walk deceitfully among your people. You shall not rise up against the blood of your neighbor. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall in any wise rebuke your neighbor. So right here, and we done a study about this earlier this year. Who is our neighbor? Okay. Notice how brother and neighbor are followed by one another here. Okay. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall in any wise rebuke your neighbor. So the context here is your brother and sister in Messiah. Okay. Uh, your enemy is not your neighbor. Okay. I know Christianity has spiritualized it to like every person's your neighbor and your fellow man. No, it's not what the scriptures teach. Okay. Your fellow man is not your neighbor. Okay. Your you, heathens are not our neighbors. They are, they are acquaintances. They're yes, they're people. There are other people that, um, that we meet in this world and, and 
that we have acquaintances with. They are not our neighbor, though. Scripturally speaking, someone that lives next to you is not the definition of your neighbor. Okay. All right. Anyway, moving on. And your hand shall not avenge you. You shall not be angry with the children of your people. You shall love your neighbor, neighbor as yourself. I am Yahuwah. Okay. You shall observe my law. You shall not let your cattle gender with one other of a kind. You know, I wonder why Yahuwah has to tell them this. I wonder why. Oh, maybe because before the flood happened, they were doing these things. Okay, they were they were trying to make hybrids with different types of animals mixing together sexually, okay? That's what this is talking about in context. Cattle, uh, different types of cattle that are not supposed to procreate together, okay? And, and kind of goes back to the Genesis 6 situation, okay? Yahuwah made everything according to its kind, different types of Different kinds of creatures are not supposed to procreate together, okay? You shall not sow your vineyard with diverse seed. You shall not put upon yourself a mingled garment, garment woven of two. Let me just explain this. I remember me and brother Joshua were talking about this one time, okay? Diverse seed is actually talking about two different types of seeds. It does not mean that you, because uh, for certain for certain plants, vegetables, and fruits, there are, there are different types of the same species, okay? It would make way more sense to me that the context of the diverse seeds is you're not supposed to mix a, a tomato with a grape. You're not supposed to mix two different types of plants together, two different types of seeds, if that makes any sense, okay? But some plants, I've even found this out recently, the hemp plant has... Um, has different varieties of it. So it's not saying that you can't use different varieties of the same plant, if that makes any sense. It's not saying that. It's saying that you can't be combining, making hybrids of plants, okay? Or vegetables, okay? Which they are doing out Which there. they do. There's great, <laughs> what is it? Cherry tomato? Uh, There's something called a pluot that is a plum, I think, and a nectarine. Yeah. Also, cherry tomatoes, right? Isn't a cherry tomato literally oh, like a, a cherry I think tomato? That's just a smaller okay. version of a of a of cherry and a grape. They actually have a grape tomato too, but okay. that's not a tomato combined with a grape. Uh, it's, it's the not? size. It's oh, okay. positive. Okay. It's the size. I, yeah. No, they grow wild. They're oh, natural. Okay. I could be wrong. Okay. I, I'll I'll look into that. And if anyone lies carnally with a woman and she be a home servant kept for a man and she has not been ransomed, her freedom has not been given to her, they shall be visited, but they shall not die because she was not set at freedom. See, this is a benefit of a slave. A lot of people want to look at the Bible like, oh, this is why I don't believe in the Bible because it promotes slavery. Look, the slave doesn't die because she was not set at free. You who actually protects this woman, um, this woman that's a slave. So basically, even though she carnally laid with a man and she was being kept for someone else as a wife, she doesn't die. She doesn't get the death penalty because she was not set at freedom. So in a way, who is actually protecting her in this in this law right here? OK, so people that want to say, oh, slavery of itself is evil, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, having having a, a home servant is wrong. And he shall bring for his trespass to Yahuwah at to the door of the tabernacle witness a ram for a trespass offering. The priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering before Yahuwah for the sin which he sinned, and the sin which he sinned shall be forgiven him. And whenever you shall enter into the land which Yahuwah your Alihim gives you and shall plant any fruit tree, then you shall purge away its unclean its fruit shall be three years uncleansed to you and notice this commandment starts off with what when you enter into the land singular the land which you who Elohim gives you this is talking about the land of canaan the, a lot of these commandments that we're reading in this chapter here are referring to when they were physically gonna walk into the land of canaan okay 
So keep that in context too, all right? It shall not be eaten. And in the fourth year, all its fruit shall be set apart and subject of praise to Yahuwah, okay? And in the fifth year, you shall eat the fruit. Its produce is an increase to you. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Okay. Eat not on the mountains, nor shall you employ auguries, nor divine by inspection of birds. You shall not make a round cutting of your hair of your head, nor disfigure your beard. One of the misun most misunderstood commandments of the Torah. Um, and after we read the rest of this chapter, I'm going to bring you to Leviticus 21, which gives you the context of this. Okay. Uh, a lot of people misunderstand this verse. Um, and you know, they, they take it to mean you can't trim your beard or shave your beard off of itself. Um, so we're going to, we're going to debunk that after reading the rest of this chapter, you shall not make cuttings in your body for a dead body. You shall not inscribe on yourselves any marks. I am Yahuwah. You shall not profane your daughter to prostitute her. So the land shall not go whoring and the land be filled with lawlessness. Okay. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my set apart places. I am Yahuwah. You shall not attend to those who have in them divining spirits nor attach yourselves to enchanters to pollute yourselves with them. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. You shall rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man. You shall fear your Elohim. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. And if there should come to you a stranger in your land, and shall, you shall not afflict him. The stranger that comes to you shall be among you as the native and you shall love him as yourself for you were strangers in the land of egypt i am yahuwah your alahim you shall not act unrighteously in right ruling in measures and weights and scales there shall be among you righteous balances and righteous weights and righteous liquid measure i am yahuwah your alahim who brought you out of the land of egypt you shall keep all my law and all my ordinances, and you shall do them. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Okay, so we're about to get to the last chapter here, but I want to actually go to 21 real quick. Okay, just show you guys something here that gives us the context. Okay, all right. So it's talking about in context, do not defile themselves for the dead. Remember, we just read Leviticus 19, 28, doing stuff for the dead. Okay, I'm going to show you something here. All right, let's go down to verse 5. Now, the Masoretic omits part of this verse out where it says for the dead. This part in the Masoretic is not there, but in the Septuagint, it's there. You shall not shave your head. What? For what? For the dead. With a baldness on the top. And they shall not shave their beard. What's the context of this verse? For the dead. Okay. Shall not shave their beard for the dead. Neither shall you make gashes on your on their flesh. We just read in Leviticus 19.28 why they're not supposed to make gashes in their flesh. For the dead. Okay. So keep everything in context, guys. You know, don't let anyone lie to you and say, oh, shaving is a sin. It's not a sin. Okay, there's certain commandments in the Torah where Yahuwah will actually tell people in certain circumstances, <laughs> you have to shave all the hair off of your body for certain reasons. Like um, we just read this, what mom, like two weeks ago about, uh, what was the one, the gangrene, the leprosy. Yeah. When you get a certain skin disease, the men will have to, if it goes into their beard, they have to shave their beard off. If it goes on a, the baldness on their head, they have to make sure they shave the rest, uh, shave all the hair of their head off. Okay, they even have to, um, you know, shave all the, all the hair of their body off. Okay, so there are certain instances where Yahuwah actually commands people to shave their hair off their body. So again, Yahuwah is not going to contradict himself. So just keep that in mind when you're reading verses like Leviticus 19.27. Okay. 
So keep that in mind. Don't take one verse by itself. You got to take it with the rest of the counsel of all of scripture. Okay. So, okay, here we go. So Leviticus 20. And Yahuwah spoke to Masha saying, you shall also say to the children of Yasharal, if any of the children of Yasharal or of those who have become converters in Yasharal, who have, shall give of his seed to Molech, let him be surely put to death. The nation upon the land shall stone him with stones and you shall set, I will set my face against that man. I will cut him off from his people because he has given of his seed to Molech to defile my set apart place and profane the name of them that are set apart to me. And if the natives of the land should in any wise overlook that man in giving of his seed to Molech, so as to not put him to death, then I will set my peace against that man and his family. I will destroy him, all who have been of one mind with him. Okay, I, I find it interesting. It says of one mind. That's kind of interesting prophetic parallel there uh, with the beast, Molech, Baal, Nimrod. So kind of find that interesting. Um, yeah. So put him to death. What is it? Verse six here. Okay. So I, I actually want to find that verse just to make a mental note of it. Um been of one mind with him so that's uh just write that down for a future prophetic study there leviticus 25 of one mind okay all right moving on to verse six here and the soul that shall follow those who have in them divining spirits or enchanters so as to go whoring after them, I will set my face against that soul and will destroy it from his people. You shall be set apart for I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, am set apart. You shall observe my ordinances and do them. I am Yahuwah that sets you apart. Every man who shall speak evil of his father, of his mother, let him die the death. Has he spoken evil of his father? Or his mother and shall be guilty. Okay. Whatever man shall commit adultery with the wife of a man, or whoever shall commit adultery with the wife of his neighbor, let them die the death, the adulterer and the adulteress. If anyone should lie with his father's wife, he has uncovered his father's nakedness. So if you want any more proof, that's what it means to see your father's nakedness. Okay, right there, verse 11. Okay, Leviticus 20, 11. Right? Anyone should lie with his daughter-in-law, let them both be put to death, for they have worked in reverence. That's what impiety means, by the way, guys. If you got like a old British English translation, like the Breton Septuagint or the King James Bible, impiety means to, is the opposite of reverence for the father. So it's like not fearing him, not lovingly fearing him. Like you don't, uh, you know, it's the opposite of reverence basically. Okay. And whoever shall lie with a male as with a woman, they have both worked abomination. Let them die the death. They are guilty. Whomsoever shall take a woman and her mother, it is lawlessness. They shall burn him and them with the fire. So, there shall not be lawlessness among you. So, yep. Whosoever shall lie with a beast, let him die the death. You shall kill the beast. Okay. To me, this makes sense. And I, I mean, this is kind of a theory of mine. But verse 15, notice how it says, you don't just kill the man, you kill the beast. And remember in uh, Genesis, Genesis 6, it says, I will kill man with beast bird with reptile just something to think about could could he be referring to uh the a punishment of hybridization i don't know you know uh, it's just a thought i had verse 16 whatever woman shall approach any beast 
so as to have connection with it, you shall kill the woman and the beast. Let them die the death. They are guilty. Whosoever shall take his sister by his father or by his mother shall see her nakedness, and she sees his nakedness. It is a reproach. They shall be destroyed before the children of their family. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness. They shall bear their sin. And whatever man shall lie with a woman that is set apart, you know, basically her, she has her flow going. Okay. So, you know, she's on her period, right. And shall uncover her nakedness. He has uncovered her fountain and she has uncovered the flux of her blood. They shall both be destroyed from among their generations. So, all right, brothers and sisters, no, 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 uh, connection with your wife during that time. So you, who is very serious about that? All right. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's sister, you know, your aunt, or of the sister of your mother. For that man has uncovered the nakedness of one near kin. They shall bear their lawlessness. Okay. Whosoever shall lie with his near kinswoman has uncovered the nakedness of one near akin to him. They shall die childless. Whoever shall take his brother's wife in his uncleanness, he has uncovered his brother's nakedness. They shall die childless. And you and keep ye all my ordinances and my right rulings, and you shall do them. And the land shall not be agreed with you, into which I bring you to dwell upon it. Okay. And walk not in the customs of the nations with I, which I drive out from before you, for they have done all these things, and I have abhorred them. I said to you, you shall inherit their land. And I will give it to you for a possession, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am Yahuwah Yerlehim, who have separated you from all the people. And you shall make distinction between the clean and unclean cattle and between clean and unclean <laughs> birds, not defile your souls with cattle or with birds or with any creeping things of the earth, which I have se separated for you by the reason of un cleanness and you shall be set apart to me because i am yahuwah your alihim who have separated you from all nations to be mine and as for a man or a woman whosoever of them shall have in them a divine spirit or be an enchanter let them both die the death you shall stone them with stones they are guilty all right that is the end of the torah portion of our half torah reading <laughs> Please stay tuned. We'll be right back on for our next portion that I'll be reading is our prophet portion. We'll be getting into Ezekiel 22 and Amos chapter 9. So please stay tuned, everyone. We'll be back. All of our brothers and sisters, Shabbat Shalom, and thank you for tuning in. We'll be right back.